Hey guys, welcome to a tutorial by Hello Studios. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to create this. Okay, so a cool little, uh, basically a 3D layer being rotated and it has a little bounce effect and some motion blur. Um, so what I did, uh, let's start out by saying uh, how I did it. So uh, first we're going to use this thing called Cooler and it's called it's at cooler.adobe.com and you just go to it and you can download all these color palettes and basically you find one that looks good to you uh, and then you can download it and what we're going to be doing is taking in this downloaded file, this downloaded color palette putting it into our file and then using that to create the color in our file okay let's jump right into it So. First thing, we want to create a new composition. We'll call this tutorial. Uh, mine's going to be 1920 by 1080 at 23.976, 10 seconds long. And I'll just hit OK. So, first thing we want to do is go to uh, scripts, file, scripts, run script, or sorry, chameleon. And this is uh, 10 bucks if you want to pay that at the e scripts website. And I'll leave a link in the description. So we're going to hit this load ASE files. And I've got some files already loaded up. Uh, so I'll hit open. And it's going to open all of them. And the first thing we want to do, I'm not going to be using this in the standard way you should be using this, or the way it's meant to be used. Uh, but rather a different way I find easier to use. Uh, it's not as... So this way it's not as streamlined as it could be but I feel like it's an easier way to use it and uh, it just makes it simpler to to use chameleon so uh, first thing we're gonna do I like this color palette here so I'm just gonna hit this play button and what that's gonna do we don't need this anymore so we're just gonna close it that's gonna do is it's gonna create a new null object called color theme and on it you're just gonna see that you have some basic colors here so we have this red this is our color palette basically of from the ASE file which is what you're going to download from Cooler so now I'm just going to take a new solid and we'll call this uh, rectangular uh, solid and we'll make it black color doesn't matter at this point because we're going to be using a fill effect so we're going to go generate fill we're going to alt click on the color of the fill and then we're going to bring up this color theme uh, and we're going to grab this pick whip and just pick whip that color there. And that's going to instantly change it. And if we change this color, it's going to update there. Um, so there's another way you can do this using Chameleon. You can auto randomize between these. And there's several other options that Chameleon gives you. But I just find this is much simpler to do. It seems more streamlined and easier. Um, so uh, the next thing we want to do is create a new uh, text layer and I'll just call this motion graphics or sorry tutorial okay so that looks pretty good I'm gonna twirl down this little box here and uh, twirl down the animate thing uh, go to fill color RGB and now on this fill color it's gonna also give us another color value I'm gonna alt click that as well bring up our color theme again and then pick whip it to this red here okay that's looking pretty good uh, next thing we're going to do is create a, a uh, we're going to switch our mask over to the round rectangle tool and then we're just going to sort of make it so it goes like that and uh, I'm just going to check here so it doesn't look like we're exactly centered um, so I'm going to center us up a little bit better the way I brought this up was just doing the posture peak key, just hitting it. So you can just twirl that on and off. And I'm going to leave it on for right now, just for a second here. Um, just grab those two objects. And it looks like they could move down a little bit. Other than that, they look pretty good. Okay. 
Um, so I'm just going to turn on alpha here. This this button here is going to show transparency. It's going to toggle transparency. Um, and what I want to do to this layer is just apply a quick stroke. So let's go generate stroke. And the stroke, I'm going to set the brush size to 3.5. And I'm going to set the stroke itself to black. And then if you hit Command or Control Shift S, H, excuse me, H, Command or Control Shift H, it'll hide and show everything uh, in the comp. So that's why I'm showing and hiding the mask right now. Pretty handy little thing. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Next, let's create our background. So we're just going to create a new solid. Uh, it doesn't matter what color it is because we're going to use that uh, that fill again. Okay. I'm going to alt click the fill color. Grab this color theme. Pick whip. Uh, let's go with this one. Okay. So now that we have this uh, behind here, I've just moved it down. Um, what we want to do is we want to rename it first of all and we'll call it background. Okay. Uh, then let's create a new solid. And again, this this doesn't matter what color it is, um, because we're going to use that fill effect again. Okay, we're going to alt click the fill effect. Come down here. I'm just going to twirl this up, and we're going to go to a slightly darker one here. So that's looking a little bit better. And then we're going to take and go to the ellipse tool. And if you double click on that, it's just going to create a mask that fills your composition size. So let's feather this. I'm going to feather it 266 pixels. I'm going to turn on the opacity to 66. And I'm going to subtract it. So that's going to give us a nice little vignetting effect. Or vignette. And we're going to put that right over the background. Okay. So the next thing we have to do is actually make this into a 3D layer. So let's make it 3D and we'll make the text 3D too because we also want that to move. And then we'll take it, we'll, we'll hit R on our keyboard to, to uh, bring down rotation and orientation. And what we want to mess with is the uh, X value, X rotation, the X value. So uh, I like to bring this to 90 so it's hard to see. Um, so what that's going to do is just give us a thin line and uh, we can if we're going to do it not right away, what we can do is we can drag this over or hit alt uh, end bracket or begin bracket to uh, alt begin bracket to make that to trim that layer. I can just show you. So that's going to trim the layer. Um, and that's going to make it so that it doesn't show up until that point. You can also do this with opacity. So you could hit T, bring up the opacity, and twirl it down, and then you know keyframe it but it's probably easier just to do it with the layer marker the layer uh, extending the layer or not okay so I'm gonna do this right away and uh, we're gonna hit R to bring up rotation and we'll just keyframe some rotation here uh, so maybe there and then on this one we're gonna we want it to twirl up like that maybe uh, let's twirl it up like that that'll be a little easier so you go to about minus 16, and you go a couple frames over, and you go to about plus 4, and then a couple frames over there, a little less, and you go to 0. Okay. Then we're going to select all these keyframes, hit function F9, and that's going to make them all easy ease, or F9 if you're just on a PC, I have my function keys on a Mac, so that's why I say function F9, but it's just function on a PC. Okay. And then this button is very important. This is going to include the property in the graph editor. So we click that, and we're going to go to graph editor here. And this is going to show us a visual representation of how our keyframes are acting. Okay. So I'm going to grab them all. Grab them all. Oops. And let's just zoom in here. And plus and minus is going to work just the same way it works inside our uh, non, inside the... Uh, uh, the timeline here inside the graph editor so we can zoom in and zoom out like that okay so I'm just gonna play with these a little bit so I wanna pull that one there pull this one maybe down a little bit and uh, pull this one over and what that's gonna do is as it happens so as we go through time it's gonna go quicker and quicker and quicker until it gets to that point 
Then it's going to go a little bit further because we're going a little bit down past this keyframe. So it's going to go a little bit further than 16. So in fact, it's going to go to 24.68 negative. Negative 24.68. And then we're going to go to positive, uh, positive 4 here. And we can pull that up even. And then um, we're just going to send it out. And let's see how this looks. Let's render. Okay, so right now we're having a little bit of an issue telling how we're doing because of the fact that our uh, tutorial text is getting in the way. So I'm just going to parent this to the rectangular solid. You want to make sure this is 3D before you do that. Um, and what that's going to do is it's just going to parent it. So when we render it, it will actually go with it. Okay, uh, let's see that again. So it might be a little bit too little here. I'm going to go a little bit higher and a little bit more intense here. And now let's render it again. And this is really just whatever works for you. Um, you just want to mess around with it until you get the uh, effect you want. So let's just see this here. Okay. Let's render it out. So, again, it might be better if we went a little bit more extreme. There we go. Okay, so that's having a bit of an issue there, so let's lower this one down a little bit. Alright, so I may have gone a little bit too much. Oh, After Effects just crashed. Okay. Okay, guys, sorry about that. After Effects just had a bit of a crash. So, um... That's looking a little harsh on that end, too. So let's just adjust this again. And this is just whatever you think looks good. So that might be a little bit fast. You can just pull these out. Oops. We'll render it again. So to me, that looks pretty good. Um, so the last thing you want to do is just turn on motion blur. And uh, that's going to give it some nice realism, some nice, uh, basically some nice motion blur. It's going to take a little bit longer to render, so you don't want to do this if you, uh, if you're not, I'm in full res here, so uh, if you have a slower computer, you may not want to do it in full res, or you want to turn it on right before you render the final output. Let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good. Um, so for creating the other ones, it was pretty easy. I uh, just copied it, duplicated it, um, duplicated it up here, and then uh, so this one we would duplicate it, call it tutorial two, or we can even call it just motion graphics, and then we just come in here, take the text, motion graphics. And then the only other thing you want to do is just resize your mask here. And hitting Command Shift H. Whoops. And we can just grab this guy here and just stretch him out. Whoops. Grab that one too. I'm holding the shift key to constrain the proportion to uh, just be on that one axis. You can also go up and angle as well, but I'm just going at this one axis. So, so now we just we have two comps: one that says motion graphics, and one that says tutorial. Okay, you take those, you put them into a new comp. And uh, I'm going to delete the uh, vignette and background here um, so we don't overdo ourselves. And then you just bring it up. Something like that. And you can offset them by about a second. That's how I did it. Just offset it. 
offset it. And we'll save. And another thing, guys, um, I have it very organized. It helps me a lot to uh, have the have the comps organized into your comps, your assets, and then this is the tutorial stuff which should be organized. But uh, as you can see, it's very nice. It's a nice little animation there. I might change the beginning of it a little bit, just turning the opacity down until there. So what I might do is just bring this guy back and then turn up the opacity there so we have a little bit nicer of a transition. Yeah, so that looks a little bit better. Okay, so basically, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, the last thing I want to show you guys is just how to create... Uh, let's see here. this transition effect. So we have this and it should be transitioning. Here we go. Okay, so this is really really easy. It's a effect called card wipe and uh, basically you just animate the transition like you want any of these transitions. Um, these are this it's a standard transition that comes with After Effects, ships with After Effects. Um, and you just turn the rows down to one and the columns to however many you want and uh, just animate it. That's it. It's very simple, very straightforward. And what I did was I just have these three in a separate comp offset by about a second each. Um, so that way, that way there's no, they're not affecting the background layer, which is this layer, which is actually inside of, uh, well, it's inside of another layer, which is inside this layer. But uh, this is why organization is very key, guys, because uh, you get confused quickly about the layers and comps and pre-comps and all that good stuff. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, that's it, guys. If you want to check out my site, it's hellostudios.net. This tutorial will be up shortly. All right, guys. Take care. Thanks a lot.